Welcome to this uh, special edition of the Robust Opposition. What we have here is a fundraiser for Ankur Patel. Yeah. He's running for uh, California State Assembly in Assembly District 45. As Matt DeBobne had to resign due to a sexual harassment scandal, which makes this race eminently winnable. We know how the California Democratic Party puts its thumb on the scales for incumbents. So, yeah, yeah. And now here in California, we do not have the Republicans to worry about. What we have to worry about is establishment Democrats or what they're called in Sacramento moderate Democrats. And many of these moderate Democrats take money from the big oil companies. So that is why we should be supporting corporate free candidates who do not take money from big oil, big pharma, all these corporations that make it so we cannot have progressive policies in California, even though we have a supermajority in the legislature and we control the uh, both houses. Now, there have been positive changes this year. We have seen the Me Too movement uh, completely wreck Sacramento. In addition to Matt DeBobne, we forced out Tony Mendoza, we forced out Raul Bocanegra. So the Me Too movement is having a really strong effect. We've gotten a lot of politicians signing the oil money out pledge. We've seen a lot of politicians go for single payer. Uh, three of the five Democratic candidates are supporting SB 562. But we need so much more. We still need to ban fracking. We still need to close down Aliso yeah. County. We still need to get, um, uh, we still need to, um, get a statewide bank. We still need to fight yeah. the, the Charter School. The Charter School yes. Association of, Amer of California is one of the biggest lobbyists. And Ankur is an educator. And so, without any further ado, I'm going to let him take the floor now to talk about all the wonderful things that he plans to do if he gets elected he gets to elected. He gets elected. Yes, the legislature. Anchor. Which side are you on? Your side. Are you on the side of corporations? No. Are you on the side of people? People. Are you on the side of oil and gas companies that are destroying our planet? No. Or are you on the side of clean air, clean water, and clean energy? No. Are you on the side of pharmaceutical and health insurance companies? No. Or are you on the side of single payer universal health care for all? No. There's so many different issues that we have come together on as a progressive movement. And I know that so many of us here are not particularly in the Assembly District 45, which I am aiming to represent. And that is the beauty of what is going on here. Not just in a particular assembly seat, and I'm honored and privileged to be a vessel for this progressive energy, articulating this message on so many important issues. And this campaign has shown how, when we come together, we are stronger. I've been using little different lies and sharpening the rhetoric to make sure that we recognize we do need to be in this together, but we have to frame the conversation. We have to take it. Exactly. We, and issue after issue. So just a little bit about myself. I was born in Assembly District 45 to immigrant parents who prioritized my education growing up. My father ran for Congress when I was 11 years old. I thought I was going to live in the White House. Against Frank Sherman. And he actually was an independent who tried to collect signatures to get on the ballot. And, and that you know, started my political trajectory kind of early. My mother gave up her job to raise me and my younger brothers. My mother's the most powerful woman I know. I'm a proud feminist. And we've talked about what it means to put what does it mean to be a feminist? What does it mean to be an ally in Me Too and now She Does? I don't know if you've started seeing what She Does. It's, it's, a, it's, it's taking that conversation to the next level. Each of these campaigns and what we do it gives us that opportunity to raise the level of political dialogue and public consciousness around these issues. So we started a Me Too Ally Pledge. MeTooAllyPledge.com uh, Really articulating with powerful women in our campaign, we articulated and wrote it out, and we're encouraging other candidates to take the, this pledge. Uh, I don't have it with me right now, but we'll get that in front of people and, and spread it. 
We've earned endorsements, right? Being a viable progressive campaign and showing issue after issue, how do you do the work, how do you bring people together from the California Nurses Association to the California Teachers Association to our revolution local to our revolution national. We've picked up Food and Water Watch action and I get a lot of powerful individual progressives Americans across. For democratic action. And wow. Americans for Democratic Action. And Americans for Democratic Action started by. Eleanor Roosevelt in 1947. So this is an intergenerational struggle. Like we mentioned, the Democratic Party makes it hard for progressives, purposely, right? Where is the party at? So my own example, in this race, you have to apply to earn the endorsement of the state party. It costs $250. They give you a list of delegates. They gave me a bad list. Right? Out of the 53 delegates that they gave us that I paid money for, we got... 50 accurate delegates and three that were not in it. Other candidates got the full accurate list. Say it with a smile, this is the game that we're playing and we gotta be conscious of it. We gotta recognize it, we, we can complain about it, but how far does that go? We recognize it, we acknowledge it, we continue to build bridges, not walls. Salud. And we, we aim for good health at the end of this, right? And maske un idioma, right? This is not just an intergenerational struggle, but this has got to be a diverse struggle, not just uh, ethnic ethnically, but also in terms of economically, right? We are bringing to we, we're in Beverly Hills right now. We can acknowledge that this is kind of a not not really a, a, a high dollar fundraiser. I appreciate everyone making the contributions to the campaign, but the way that this struggle moves forward is by recognizing the diversity of it, recognizing the things that are facing us, be it the climate crisis and the fact that the political establishment and what's going on is going to ignore it until it doesn't let them make profits anymore. Um, there are so many issues that we touched on. You know, Lauren gave the rundown. I'm on it. I agree. From the state bank and what our campaign is doing to make this intersectional struggle, the capacity we're building in terms of everything from, if we have the right message, that doesn't mean much if we're not getting it out. If we have the right message and we're only preaching to the choir, mm -hmm. then we're going to sit here complaining about other people with power. Yeah. If we have the right message, we're building the capacity, we're getting it out there, we're organizing and we're thinking long term, now we have a path to victory and we're doing the work that's necessary to get us away from the failed political system. I, I love taking questions. That's part of it. I'm a horizontal thinker. I want to listen. I want to incorporate the ideas that other people have and then re-articulate them and spread them. We have this opportunity because this is an April 3rd special election. It's coming up quick. Mail, back, vote by mail. That's happening this week. So wow. it's happening quick. It's, we got the fast forward button press. We need people to phone bank. We need people to talk to other voters. We need to raise money so we can send mail like this one right here if you can hold it up. So that says, what would Eleanor Roosevelt do? So that's, that's kind of, we've been able to pull people in, volunteers, activists, even consultants who are doing high quality work on a budget because of the cause. And that's what we're all about. I feel that we are in it for the right reasons, for the cause, for the issues we care about. And people want to work on these kinds of campaigns. People want to invest in something that they can believe in. And I'm, again, honored and humbled to be that candidate in this moment. Yes! I just spent three hours this morning walking in the middle of District 45, Satakoy, and Reseda Boulevard, basically, knocking on doors for you. And not a single person that answered the door knew who you were. Yeah. And not a single person that answered the door knew that there's a special election on April the 3rd. So the question is, what are we going to do in order to get the word out? Yeah. So we're having people like yourself knock on doors to let people know <laughs> that there's an election. That's part of it. <laughs> we, we've sent mail. We've got the political data incorporated in terms of, again, being sophisticated in who we're reaching out to. So you're not knocking on unlikely voters. You're knocking on doors of people who have voted in the 2016 primary, the 2016 presidential election, and the 2017 local. So we're cutting the universe and being targeted because if we're knocking on 100 doors and 85% of them aren't going to vote, that's a waste of 85% of the energy. We're not doing that. So the energy that we are directing is going at likely voters. We're not just doing the knocking and the uh, showing up to forums and debates and uh, our me earned media. Uh, we're, we're doing everything and anything possible in that targeted way. Uh, we sent out a robocall. People don't like it, but it's one of those things where for the amount of money and the amount of reach that we can have, 
whatever is at our disposal in a cost-effective way, we are trying to do to get the message out, activate people, and engage them, and let them know. Um, thank you for knocking on doors yes. and doing all that kind of work. We're ramping up our calling operation. Again, looking at the numbers, right? There's about 265,000 registered voters in Assembly District 45. I'm assuming most Assembly Districts are in that range. We had a special election in 2013 for the same seat because we had our previous uh, Assembly member, uh, November 5th, he was elected. November 6th, he filed to run for City Council and he won. And now we had a special election in 30,000 people voted. 25,000 people cast a ballot. We're wrapping up the phone calling operation because that's the way to maximize and leverage our ability to contact people. Instead of having you drive out to Assembly District 45, you can call from your own home. We're setting up little online types of things so that you can see other people calling at the same time. And, and we're honing in. We got this specific angle, I guess it's live streaming, it's okay, too much information in terms of, in 2016, we had 100,000 people vote in the presidential primary. We had 4,500 independents Request a Democratic Party ballot to vote in that presidential primary. That's Sounds like Bernie or burners. So those are particular folks we're targeting. So again, using the data in a sophisticated way and reaching out to those folks is something that our campaign is doing. And again, willing and wanting to share with other folks as we do this. So this message that we're developing, be it about a state bank and how does that press release get formed and which media does it go to and how does that inform people that there is an election while talking about the issues that we care about. It's, it's a concerted effort, you know, it's a connective tissue. This event right here is part of it. Thank you all for coming. We're going to have an, another one coming up. And it, it's events, it's activism, it's showing up, it's all these things that we know we've been doing. And then picking the issues and raising the conversation, getting into the details. So next week on the 10th, we're going to have a fundraiser at Dr. Ron Birnbaum's house. Focusing on universal single-payer health care. How do we pay for it? We can, we should, we will. That is not an excuse that these modern Democrats are going to use to stump me or progressives. We know we can, we know we should. And if it's a 2.3% sales tax with exemptions or a 2.3% gross receipts tax with exemptions for small and medium-sized businesses, there are different ways that we can make this happen. And as a state assembly member, this is a little question that comes up in some of these debates. A lot of these conversations when different organizations, they ask you, what is the first thing that you're going to do? What is the first piece of legislation? And I have struggles. There's so many things that we are in this for. I'm not a one-issue candidate, right? And, and I've been struggling with it. I've been saying something like, I would ban the death penalty. Yeah. That's what we're <laughs> but, then, but then Benny brought up, you know, since Rendon Shell. 562, Ooh. something like 2,500 people in this state have died because they don't have health care. Mm -hmm. About yeah. nine people a day in this state. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. how do we reframe that and say, what's the first piece of legislation that we're going to bring? Those amendments to make 562 happen. <laughs> but again, we can talk about so many different issues that we want to bring. Maybe it's chartering a state bank. Also, why can't we do all of these things in the same way? <laughs> And the capacity that we're building, the energy that we're, we're bringing into this campaign particularly, but going into June, going into November, is going to snowball. We are going to build on it, and we're going to do all of these things in the next session of the State Assembly. So you're running several campaigns at the same time. It makes it a little bit more difficult. Yeah. We have two campaign committees where we're accepting funds to, a regular and a special. We're going to have four elections on three days. Four elections for the same seat on three days, April 3rd, the primary, June 5th, the runoff, and the regular primary, and then November, the runoff for the two-year seat. So, yeah, it makes it a little bit confusing and complicated, but we're up to the task, and we're going to win all of them. Yes. Hey, yes. why don't you talk about your opponents, your Democrats? So there are eight people in the race. There's one no-party preference, Dennis Zine. Uh, I actually ran against him in the city controller's race. And he's technically dropped out, but people feel because of name recognition, NPP, he might have a chance to get a thousand or plus votes. There's an 18-year-old Republican. He's a sweetheart. He's a compassionate conservative. There's six Democrats in this race, counting myself. I actually dem entered. If uh, I don't know how that feels, I don't mind sharing and, and telling how it is because of the and to make this case in the Democratic Party and pull it left because five of the other candidates, there's a range. There are some older activists who have been involved with the party, there's a neighborhood council president, there's two main opponents, I feel, in terms of establishment Democrats. One, uh, 
has a lot of money. Uh, corporate lawyer reframed his platform and now is a constitutional rights attorney because he took two ACA cases for the right reasons. But previously, the, the, the firm that he worked for defended Chevron and Dole when they sterilized workers. It's one of these Gibson, Dunn, and Crusher. Uh, got an infamous name. So another kind of groomed Democratic operative who worked for a Senator Evan Bide in, 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 in Indiana and, and Harvard lawyer and all those sorts of things, didn't really live in the district, moved in, but because of that political connection has been able to, smart guy, nice guy, friendly, but what circles do you run in and how does that I impact what you're going to do into the future? I've been running in the progressive activist circles at the grassroots, whereas other folks have been running in these establishment democratic big money circles from outside of the district. Then there's a, 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 another staff member for uh, an elected official who's wrapped up a lot of the city council endorsements. Again, part of that insider Democratic Party local government that continues to push up the chain but doesn't do anything different, right? A, a little different spin on background and ethnicity and gender, but the policies are still the same centrist Democratic policies that no longer work. So that's kind of the feel. And I wonder if there are some public events that likely voters might be showing up at. For instance, Brad Sherman is having a town hall meeting on Sunday, March 25th. If there were a group of us outside there with your cards introducing you, I think a lot of likely voters would be at that event. So there was another town hall on January 21st or so, and we owned the space. We had yeah. people in buttons oh, collecting yeah. signatures. We were out there, we did that work. Um, and, and, and those sorts of things are, are part particularly interesting, we could do that as well, but again, trying to be in crunch time, how to direct people to help us win. If people want to take on that task, absolutely, we'll plug you in. Calling voters directly is the most efficient way to talk. So well, we, we're using CallFire, a phone, online phone banking operation, and we're uploading lists as we go through them. And you click, you sign on as an agent, and it's pretty simple from there, and it connects you call, you talk to people, you take notes, it uploads it back, we clean the data, and then we re-upload it and we follow up again. You mentioned your endorsement, the California Nurses, Our Revolution. What are they doing to get your name out there? Particularly yeah. Our Revolution, which has the whole database, phone. There's potentially an independent expenditure and what that looks like so they can't coordinate, so not so clear on how that looks. They may end up sending mail. They may end up using their independent expenditure to make phone calls. We're looking at Relay that allows you to send a text message at eight cents a piece or there's some different apps that we can use so that a Google document with your phone numbers and names can be used to text message people at five cents a piece so that can go out widely. Again, all this technical stuff in terms of a campaign, I'm not really a technical person, but we're, we're trying to pick it up and then apply it in this way. Is that be a way to get the CSUN, the Pierce College kids? I mean, those texts, and they were personal. You know, like, hi, this is Jody from the Bernie camp. I mean, everyone got those. And then if they can go out to people like us, we can then send them not on your dime to all the people we know in the district. That this has been a fundraiser for Ankur Patel, who is a corporate free Bernie crat running for assembly in uh, California. His race is eminently winnable. So signing off from uh, Benedict Canyon here in the hills above Beverly Hills, this has been Lauren Steiner for the Robust Opposition.